Hi everyone, my name is Gabriel and this is the Hour of the Raven, your channel for everything Ravenloft, RPG, Dungeons and Dragons and Horror. Today we are going to explore the domain of Falkovnia, a kingdom under a military regime and ruled by a bloodthirsty tyrant warlord. Before we start, I would like to remind everyone that this video will be focused on Falkovnia from the classic Ravenloft setting. We will consider the events and characters that existed in the domain prior to the reboot of Von Richten Guide to Ravenloft. At the end of my series of videos about the Falkovnia from the classic Ravenloft setting, I will make some considerations and comparisons with the new version of Falkovnia in the Von Richten Guide to Ravenloft. Unfortunately, Dark Lord Vlad Drakov from classic Falkovnia was not included in the new book Von Richten Guide to Ravenloft. And instead, a new version of the character, Dark Lord Vladiska Drakov, was inserted in his place. If you are interested in an update and stats for the 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons of the original Dark Lord of Falkovnia, I recommend you take a look at the version of Vlad Drakov created by Mist Factor Press in the DMs Guild. Mist Factor Press is on a project to update all Dark Lords and Domains to the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons and create a complete book of Dark Lords. They are also making available Dark Lord and Domains in specific books, releasing a new Dark Lord and Domain every week. And the book about Vlad Drakov and Falkovnia is already available in the DM's Guild. Finally, before we begin, I would like to warn you in advance that Falkovnia is a brutal realm of human horrors. By the very evil and cruel nature of humanity, is exposed in the light of Rivenloft's dark fantasy and gothic horror. Are you ready? As we made our way through the abandoned forest of Borka, towards the kingdom of Rishmola, we came across a secret camp of soldiers. Falkovnian forces are stealthily crossing the territory of Borka, due to their secret agreements with the realm of NVIDIA. Our accidental discovery ends up putting us in danger when we are caught and knocked unconscious after a heavy blow to the skull. For many days we remain unconscious while our swollen skulls bring us strange delusions and visions. In this state, we dream of an alternate and nightmare reality and receive strange visions of a powerful necromancer. Was this wizard of the coast responsible for these strange torments and hallucinations? When we wake up, we find ourselves in cages, being taken as slaves and prisoners across the brutal lands of Falkovnia. How brave! Falkovnia is a domain of Ravenloft ruled by a despotic military group and led by a tyrant and ruthless conqueror. This domain explores themes of tyranny, despotism and fascism and deals with the horrors of human brutality and cruelty. The domain is situated in the medieval era and the primary inspiration for the realm and Dark Lord is the lands of Valachia during the rule of the historical figure of Vlad Tepes the Impaler. Contrary to what some sources have recently spoken, the themes dealt in this domain are not confused with the vampire myth, but rather explore the brutality of a military leader and medieval conqueror. Despite the inspiration from medieval Valachia, the realm also draws directly from more modern sources to explore horror themes, and it also portrays the horrors found in 20th century fascist states. Culturally, the portrayal of the language, titles and names of some characters also presents inspiration in Germany and Austria. The Falkovnia domain is located in the central north region of the Ravenloft core, the continent where most of the domains that compose the classic setting are clustered. Before the Grand Conjunction, Falkovnia was bordered on the east by the lands of Dorvinia and Gehenna on the north by the kingdoms of Darkon and La Mordia, on the west by the lands of the Monlieu, and on the south by the kingdoms of Rishmula and Borka. After the events of the Grand Conjunction, 
the kingdom of Dorvinia was unified with the kingdom of Borca, and the lands of Gehenna disappeared, giving way to the mysterious Shadow Rift. Falkovnia's climate is temperate, with long mild spring and autumn, where the planting and harvesting of its broad plantations are carried out. Its summers are long, humid and rainy, and its winters too cold and snowy are spared by the Sleeping Beast mountain range from the icy winds that plague Glamordia to the north. Falkovnia's borders are clearly demarcated by nature. To the east, where the domains once bordered Gehenna, is now the gigantic abyss of the Shadow Rift. Its other borders are all demarcated by rivers. The Vuka River enters from the north from Darkon and continues down the western border into the lands of the Moli, a tributary of the great Muzad River. Once a river widely used by merchant ships, the commerce suffered a major downturn after the tragedy that devastated Ilaluk, turning the capital of Darkon into necropolis. The animal life that inhabited the river dies while passing through the city of Necropolis, and now the river is known for its pollution and dead animals, even before receiving the sewage from Lekar. Also to the north, along the Darkonian border, follows the Drogak River. Once this mighty river emanated from the springs from the lands of Gehenna, but with the disappearance of these lands, the river has practically dried up. The small stream of water only becomes larger when it meets the Gratian River. The Gratian River rises in the mountains east of Falkovnia and runs through the interior of the kingdom until it joins the Drogak River at the place known as Gratian Falls. These two rivers become the Umisha River until they become a tributary of the Vuka River. Also in the mountains to the east, the Talon River and the Zukfer River are born, which descend to become tributaries of the Arbicat River, which marks the border between Falkovnia and Rishmulaw. These rivers run along the border of Borka and Rishmulaw until it becomes a tributary of the Muzad River, which passes through Lake Grigvogel before crossing to Damori, also marking the western border. Falkovnia has numerous lakes which make its landscape quite scenic. Most of them are close to the Vuka River. Near the town of Lekar are the Raptor Lakes, which encompass Lake Falk, Adler and Eule. At the west end, near the Demoli border, are Lakes Schwart and Bashir. Finally, to the south, on the banks of the city of Silbervas, is the huge Lake Grivogel, with its icy blue waters. The lake receives many ships that trade in the river, and legend says that it is bottomless, and shortly after its banks there is an abrupt drop and a wall that goes to an unknown depth. Falkovnia does not have a very rugged terrain, and its dark soil and flatter landscape is extremely suitable for agriculture. To the northeast are the remaining hills of the Lamordia mountain range known as the Sleeping Beast. This region of hills and forests is called Weiss Falkland and is bustling with merchants from Amordia and Falkovnia. The most rugged part of Falkovnia is to the east of the kingdom, in the crumbling hills. These regions is what remains of the Balinok mountain range, which after the Grand Conjunction disappeared or collapsed into the Shadow Rift. These hills are full of tunnels and is quite unstable and full of sinkholes. Many believe that these hills may be slowly crumbling, and perhaps one day may fully collapse into the shadow rifts. Originally, the Falkovnia region was covered by dense forests with tall trees. However, its rich soil has given way to countless fields and crops, and now most of its landscape is littered with golden fields for agriculture. The region known as the Skites Crescent starts south of the West Timori Road and follows the Skype Road from Lekar to Silbervas and Aire. This region is full of plantations and oceans, where a great force of peasants are active in agriculture, producing the grains and food exported by Falkovnia. 
although some scattered woods can be found in the abysses. The kingdom of Falkovnia still maintains some of its forests. To the north, the Darkonian Forest of Shadows extends into the lands of Falkovnia, where they are called Duncan Hartswald, which covers the region between the cities of Lekar, Stattengard, and Morfensi. As we move away from the Skype Crescent region, leaving farms and plantations behind, the Silverwald Forest covers the hearts of Falkovnia, and the dark and dense forest remains partly untouched, and many peasants attest that woodcutters find haunted ruins and an enchanted clearings within. Finally, east of Morfensi and Aeri is the sinister Vigilia di Mortia, in a rocky terrain near the crumbling hills. The trees in this forest are sparser, and some of them are afflicted with a strange condition. The centuries of death are dead trees without leaves and whose trunk are completely white. Local legend says that every time a death is committed in the name of Vlad Drakov, one of the trees in the forest is spontaneously combust and becomes a century of death. Falconian cities are connected by wide Kudroy roads. The East Timori roads connect the capital Lekar to the town of Morfensi. The Skype road crosses the domain through the capital Lekar, crossing Silbervas and Aeri until reaching the kingdom of Borka. Between Aeri and Morfensi, there is the Silverwald road, a small and neglected road that connects rural regions between the two cities. From the side road, the Lecher Road leads to the town of Lichberg, in Borka. To the west, the Prey Road leaves from the Skite Road and goes to the town of Chateaufort, in Damoli. Finally, the King's Highway of Darkon connects Darkon to the city of Stattengrad before joining the West Timori Road. Falkovnia's forests are densely vegetated with broad trees full of oak, beech, spruce, cherry, and pine trees. Falkovnian soil has some peculiar characteristic, which causes the trunk of trees to turn black and its forests take a dark and frightening aspect. The region has a thick undergrowth with creepers, brambles and some poisonous plants, as some reports point to the presence of killer vines and creeping ivy. Among these vines there is the plant known as Abfaldus which has anesthetic properties, and many farmers have acquired the habit of chewing these herbs, becoming lethargic and addicted. Falkovnia's fauna is typical of a temperate climate, and the forest abounds with numerous animals. Deer, rabbits and wild boar can be found in its woods, and also predators such as wolves, bears and wildcats. The region is home to a large number of birds of prey, such as hawks, falcons, eagles, owls and vultures. Since the Grand Conjunction, the beasts of nature have suffered from a plague, and strange black bulbs have covered the bodies of some sick animals. Some less reliable accounts report that the dense forests of Falkovnia hide mythical beasts such as dangerous griffons, hippogriffs, manticores, Ankangs, basilisks, and even weavers, but it's not possible to pinpoint the veracity of these reports. A danger that has plagued the eastern part of the realm is the creatures called the Spawn of the Lizard, a band of kobolds that have terrorized the peasants and hiding tunnels of the crumbling hills. The population of Falkovnia is almost entirely composed of the Falkovnian ethnic group. These people are generally of medium height, stout body, and fair skin. Although the hardships of pestilence and heavy strenuous labor leave them with a gray complexion, with boils and rashes on their skin. Their hair goes from light and blonde tones to a deep dark black. Their eyes range from light blue to black, with occasional green eyes. Men usually wear short hair with military cuts. Women wear their hair long and loose unless they enter military life when they also adopt short haircuts. It's important to note that although women are admitted to the Falkovnian army, the sexist view of society hinders their rights, 
and women need to devote themselves with fervent commitment to the nation if they are to rise in their career. All Falkovians have the seal of Drakov marked on their foreheads, the mark of the honk, branded in their skins shortly after their birth, marked as the property of their ruler. Many of them also bear scars of mutilation on their bodies, a symbol of the brutal Falkovian justice system. Most Falkovians live miserably and dress in simple garments with shabby tunics and dresses, often torn and streaked with dirt. Merchants and other classes who manage to rise above the common population dress in better quality clothing, but they dare not confuse their clothing with military garb. The military, Falkovnia's true upper class, dress in broad tunics or armor adorned with the symbol of Vlad Drakov's falcon. Life in Falkovnia is harsh and cruel for most Falkovnians. Land ownership belongs to the military, and most of the population works in Safdan, working strenuously in the fields to plant and harvest these lands. In the cities, some of the population work on the manufacture of products as artisans, but are obliged to sell their products to merchants previously licensed by the military and must yield to the price and pressure of these merchants. All production and trade is subject to requisitions, fees and taxes established by the military. In obtaining any service or license to exercise trade, demands bribes from the military bureaucrats who control this permission. This harsh reality lead many miserable people to the city streets, and theft and crime are high. Okovia does not have a true nobility, but high-ranking military occupy this position, living comfortable lives occupying the court of Vlad Rakov. Despite the oppressive reality, the population of Falkovnia rarely rebels against this military dictatorship, and a few times they rise up they suffer harsh and brutal repression. Some groups, however, still manage to rise against oppression, risking their lives to fight against Drakov domination. Falkovnia's overpopulation and poor living conditions make Falkovnia a melting pot for many diseases. Cholera contaminates the water in their cities, and outbreaks of the bubonic plague ravage the population. Numerous plagues and diseases can be found amidst the population, and it's not uncommon to find leper colonies hidden in the forests. Faced with such a terrible life and high mortality rates, Falkovnians marry young, and marriages often take place between 12 and 13 years of age. Marriage must first be registered, marriage must first be registered with the Brandstofizer and giving the approval of the state. Festivities are modest, and the military may demand the right of the first night, demanding to lie with the bride after the wedding, as a sign of loyalty of the family to Falkovnia. Rumor has it that Vlad Drakov himself often exercised such hateful prerogative. Falkovnians do not receive any education throughout their life, unless they join Drakov's army. Soldiers receive a modicum of education in military camps, but true education is reserved for high officers in the army. The Falkovnian government invests in the education and hiring of specialists, and many sages of different areas can be found serving Drakov's government. The Falkovian diet is usually made up of tin porridges and soups, with lots of cereals, grains and vegetables. Meat consumption is awfully expensive for most Falkovnians, and almost all livestock is destined to supply the army. Among the typical dishes consumed in this region are numerous types of sausages and different dishes of pork meat. The Falkovian language is unique in the land of the mists, and is unrelated to any other language on the continent. This language, considered harsh by some neighboring realms, can adapt and bring several nuances in a single Falkovnia's architecture is uninspired and focused on practicality. Taverns, houses and commercial establishments are usually small and cramped, made of stone and wood, with a tashed hoof. The poorest and most deprived population 
lives in poorly finished wattle and daub houses. The military or government buildings are all made of grey stone in massive and impersonal style and looks even more imposing and oppressive facing the rest of the city constructions. Its cities are generally walled and protected but suffer from overcrowding. Its population squeezed into cramped buildings and most of its streets are unpaved, its muddy paths filled with the filth and dirt of its inhabitants. Most Falconians only think of a way to survive one day at a time. Many look for a way to join the army to improve their lives, but most become just foot soldiers. Those who are capable and adaptable to the army's rigid and brutal philosophy end up rising to the ranks and helping to maintain this violent and aggressive system. Falkovnia's population is mostly human, and they view other non-human races as inferior. Non-human races have no rights in Falkovnia, and they are considered property, being treated like slaves by the Falkovnian army. Ultranationalism and the thirst for military conquest propagated by the forces of Drakov's army makes many Falkovnians have visions of hatred and fear of foreigners. Magic in Falkovnia is viewed with awe and fear by the population. Despite Vlad Drakov's disdain for arcane magic, it is strictly controlled by the Ministry of the Arcane, located in the Radiant Tower in Lekar. This ministry registers and controls users of arcane magic in Falkovnia who must swear allegiance to Vlad Drakov and make themselves available for summoning to service by the state. Divine magic is viewed with few restrictions by the state, and some temples and foreign faiths can be found in major cities. However, most Falkovnians do not follow any creed and believe that their gods are long dead. Some still invoke symbols of ancient and forgotten Falkovnian gods but most do not even believe in the existence of an afterlife. A few temples to the Eternal Order and Ezra can be found in their cities, and the cult of Hala is also strong in this region, especially in the countryside. Okovnia's economy revolves primarily around agriculture. Its rich soil produces countless grains that make it the main producer of wheat, rye, oats, barley and hops that are exported to almost every nation in the core of the Land of the Mists. Most of this production is exported and supplies the coffers of the military who govern these lands. Falkovnia's lands still produce potatoes, mainly for internal consumption, and part of its territory is destined for livestock. Falkovnian cheese have a good reputation, but besides grains, the main demand for Falkovnian products is their beers, and their master brewers are famous across many lands. The crumbling hills have some mining activity, in sinister camps where the slaves and prisoners walk to death. For all the militarism that permeates this realm, Falkovnian's blacksmiths are considered only average, and the realm has benefited greatly from commercial partnerships with Lamordia to provide them with superior weapons. Falkovnia is also known for its falconry, and the falcons trained by Falkovnian masters are expensive and desired animals in numerous core lands. The entire government of Falkovnia is dominated by the army, and society is dominated by this military hierarchy. Falkovnia's highest authority is King Führer Vlad Drakov and immediately below him are five ministers, who administer the Ministry of Science, the Ministry of Arcane, the Ministry of Finance and Commerce, the Ministry of Intelligence, and the Ministry of Central Prison. Perhaps the most powerful and feared of all these ministers is the responsible for the Ministry of Central Prison, which enforces internal civil obedience in Falkovnia and administer the fate of countless slaves and prisoners who are destined for their dungeons. Below these ministers, personally chosen by Vlad Drakov, is the entire chain of military hierarchy, including soldiers, officers, and the dreaded talons of Drakov. 
The Talons are Drakov's most experienced and fiercest soldiers, whose loyalty and experience have been amply tested. These feared warriors receive the Talon Bracers, a symbol of their loyalty and power. Magically imbued artifacts, they lock permanently around their wrists. They also wear full plate armor, complete with helmets that resemble the beaks of falcons and that identify the symbol of their authority. Polkovnian laws ensure that the population will always be at the mercy of their armies. The civilian population is not allowed to own any weapon other than the most basic tools for walking in the field or hunting animals. Foreigners entering these lands must pay costly fees to transport their weapons, and they must be tied with complex knots to their scabbards to become unusable unless the military knot is broken. Every Falkovnian and foreigner who walks these lands must always carry their documents. For foreigners, obtaining these documents and visas is expensive and essential to be allowed across the border. For Falkovnians, these papers are proof of their nationality and identify their age, abilities, marital status and disciplinary history. The army demands constant updates of these documents through complex bureaucratic and corrupt ways, using stamps and arcane means to uncover forgeries. The penalty of being approached without these documents is being sent to the dungeons and possibly to slavery or death. The law at Falkovnia is strict and derives direct from edicts by King Fuhr Vlad Drakov. Any violation of the law may be subject to review and punishment by members of the army, and the highest ranking member present usually act as judge to determine punishment. Many of the legal violations committed in Falkovnia are punishable by death penalty. Although the King Führer Vlad Drakov demands at least one prisoner delivered to him each night to die slowly impaled by the stake, other methods of death penalties can be found, such as beheadings, hangings, dismemberments, or being baited in boiling oil. Mutilations are common penalties for many crimes, as is the penalty of slavery. This risk is especially strong for non-human races which are considered property on Falkovnia's lands and can be readily captured by anyone for forced, strenuous and cruel labor in painful and dangerous activities. Prisoners who prove themselves strong and capable may be sent to the gladiator arenas to entertain the masses. In times of war, gladiators are usually conscripted into the front ranks of more dangerous activities. And when the army is short of reinforcements, any individual can be suddenly co-opted by press gangs to face the horrors of battle on the front lines. Falkovnia's relations with its neighbors are strained to say the least. Altogi has a central position as a trade road and food supplier to other colonies. Vlad Drakov's history as an aggressive, bellicose and conquering tyrant made many see Falkovnia as a major threat. Falkovnia has friendly and commercial relations only with the Kingdom of La Mordia, in which it trades for a large quantity of manufactured goods in exchange for grain and other agricultural production. Its neighbor realms to the south are seen as weak and fragile kingdoms, ready to be conquered. The signing of the Treaty of the Four Towers against Falkovnian advances has added a new element to Drakov's expensive strategies and barred new invasions from Falkovnia for the time being. The only enemy of the state considered truly worthy of Falkovnia's interest is the grandiose realm of Darkon, against which Falkovnia has tried countless times to invade but has always been frustrated by the raising army of undead who obey the commands of Azanin Rex. Recently, Vlad Drakov's proximity to the equally ruthless tyrant Malokyo Adere of Nvidia has worried neighboring kingdoms. The two rulers seem to have developed a personal affinity and interest, and the dispatch of Falkovnian mercenaries to help Malokyo Adere's genocidal plans 
is a matter of concern to other nations, who find themselves suddenly surrounded by ruthless and conquering tyrant allies. After a long period traveling in cages and chains, we came to dungeon cells. We are branded with hot iron, with the symbol of the falcon, and sold into slavery. Deprived of our items, and surrounded by soldiers, we can only suffer the hardships of this life, and think of a way to survive until we can escape. Fate places us under the command of a military lord, who rules a distant province, and after realizing that we are literate and versed in the Falconian language, we are directed towards a less painful activity. In the house of his fortress, we are assigned to copy old dusty tomes, historical records of this kingdom. Join us, subscribe to this channel, and activate notifications, and let's together discover the bloody and violent history of the kingdom of Falkovnia.